Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome back to yet another GR Corolla video. I know we've been gone for a couple weeks. Uh, we took a little bit of break from uploading, but don't worry. We didn't take a break from filming. We have a lot of stuff to go over and that's what this video is gonna be all be about. Yes, if you guys saw by the title and thumbnail, we do have a new sequential transmission for the Corolla and we are on the way to the shop right now where the guys are installing it. So uh, stay tuned and let's get into the video, baby. Yeah. Whoa, we're starting off right away. What are we doing right now, Dave? Had to save some changes and uh, ran the car through each gear for a period of 10 minutes to kind of bed them together and do that initial wear in. And now we're ready for 50 kilometers of street driving and testing in mid to full throttle. Ah. Yeah. Mid, mid, mid to full throttle. <laughs> What's up? Uh... Right? Yep. The sequential is already installed. We're about to go drive it for the first time. But before we do that, we took a bunch of videos, a bunch of clips from installing it. We pulled the motor, took the old transmission out, which you can see is over here on the table. So yeah, we'll play those clips and then uh, we will see you guys when we go for our first drive. Transmission has been broken for now probably two and a half months. Uh, kind of going back and forth, deciding on what route we want to take this build. We did end up going and buying a sequential transmission. If you guys are new to this series and you don't know kind of the story of our GR Corolla, we bought it new almost a year ago. We've been slowly modifying it up until this point where now it's a pretty serious race car build. We ended up going the sequential route and then of course parts delays, that sort of stuff. The transmission took a little bit to come in, but now it's all ready. We're gonna take the stock trans off, kind of set it up here, show you guys the differences between the new sequential and, uh, and the stock trans. And here we have it, the two transmissions. We have, of course, the stock broken junk, horrible OEM Toyota transmission over here on the left. And then the greatest of billet casing, Kotu shirt, Kotu. So I worked with a guy, uh, Neil from Kotu over in uh, somewhere, I think the Czech Republic. Uh, we went back and forth a whole bunch talking about gear ratios, making sure that the stuff that we were setting up for this transmission was gonna work for the drifting and you know a couple other the events that we're gonna go to this year. We've made so many jokes of like, we're just gonna leave it out of the car just so we can keep looking at it. The car does not deserve this. No, <laughs> definitely not. I mean, you have the, you know, the handle, the sequential handle, Billet on the bottom, carbon fiber on the top. So the basics are, you have a shifter cable that goes forward and back rather than left and right, right? This shifter cable on this end will connect to the bottom of that shift lever over there and then pull back. Pulling back is upshift, pushing forward is downshift. And then the little reverse lever over here is to, is a neutral lockout and a reverse lockout. So you have to pull the lever, put it in neutral, pull the lever again, put it in reverse, and then uh, and then just pull back to go back into neutral and then back into first gear. The kit also came with, so this gear indicator, so we'll have to mount this somewhere in the car, kind of up on the dash or something. And then it came with the wiring harness. We do have to take off the throw out bearing, which is this unit right here. And we have to swap that over, so one, two, three bolts, and then swap it over to one, two, three, and then the clutch line sneaks through the hole in the back right over there, and that'll sneak through that hole right in there. Sequential also comes with a uh, different front LSD. I forget the company that they use. Uh, it is a, a pretty decently locking one, just like the 1.5 RS that we have in this transmission. And then next video, we're gonna tear this job apart 
and see what actually broke. Uh, we have a couple ways of fixing this transmission, but we thought, you know, we have the other Corolla and then we're gonna build, be building a couple of customer Corollas here in the future. So having a stock transmission that's built uh, might be a good thing to have laying around. So we got the whole thing swapped over. Uh, there are a couple studs that are gonna be reused from the stock trans. There's a clutch line that needed to be swapped over over here. Uh, we test fitted the cable and stuff, made sure it was all good. We actually shifted through a couple gears. Here's a better look, you guys, at the, uh, the lamp speed turbo kit, kind of with the rest of the stuff taken off. Uh, G25 660 with the dot seven two rear housing. You have a uh, turbo smart wastegate, the lamp speed exhaust manifold. We also have these awesome blue titanium exhaust manifold bolts. Uh, all these oil lines and stuff are all part of the lamp speed kit. So you have some banjo bolts, another banjo. You also have a nice billet piece down here that adapts the uh, stock line to like an AN fitting. And then you have this, another AN fitting coming off, meeting up with a coolant line over there that robs one of the stock coolant lines. We got the ATS twin disc sitting right there. As you guys probably know from the other videos, it's a little bit noisy. You get, little, you get rid of the uh, flex plate and stuff in the stock clutch and uh, these motors make quite the quite the racket. Dave's, what? What? Huh? What? I was gonna say, the racket, well check out the AC compressor, you wanna see some racket, yeah, there right. you go. Right. Beginning of January, uh, Dave had the car on the dyno. We were trying to do a little bit of tuning with like shift cut and anti leg stuff. We we're about 30 horsepower down, and it was making some colorful noises, like banging noises that we thought was from the transmission. Dave put it in gear to do another pull, and we both heard like a, what I think was yeah. the piece of metal dropping on the floor of the dyno <laughs> and we were and we were both like all right let's just stop this exploded dude it did seriously explode apart metal everywhere and down like everywhere look at this stuff you guys it looks it makes the motor look crappy like shit. yeah it Thank makes you. the motor look crappy you. dude head. yeah right this stuff is wild dude got the old Classic seven speed badge over here. Mm -hmm. It is officially the next day, and these guys have been putting in a bunch of work, getting the motor back in the car. Bolt the transmission up to the motor, everything fit freaking perfectly. Like, came together, slid together almost better than stock did. Uh, fits up perfectly with the engine mount over here on the passenger side. Right now, Dave and Billy are trying to get the shifter cable, which is right here and the reverse lockout cable, which is this one right here. Trying to snake everything back up through the firewall right up in here. Trying to make sure that it's not rubbing the exhaust because that downpipe definitely gets super hot. So we want to make sure it's kind of routed around it. Uh, there is heat shielding there. We want to make sure it's not rubbing on the heat shield, not going to rub through kind of the rubber coating on the line. Make sure that the cable doesn't fail on us. I called the Toyota dealership today, $2,400 to get an OEM AC compressor from Toyota for a GR Corolla. So what that means is we're gonna figure out a way to just completely disengage the clutch on the AC so we don't really have to fix it. At least that's what I'm hoping for because I ain't spending $2,400 on it. We're gonna be using some 75W140 uh, gear oil for the transmission. That's what Neil from Kotec kind of recommends. So I'm gonna go to the store, run and get some of that. And uh, yeah. Hopefully she's on the ground by the end of the day and we can get her moving. All right. There we go. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, it sounds like we're in a video game. <laughs> like, that doesn't even sound like a real noise. Nice and close together, too. 
One of the craziest things in the entire world. <laughs> I didn't even see that. I was looking at this one right here. Yeah. Yep. Maybe we need a hose clamp over here. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work like that no more. An admire. Whoo! Oh boy. Stock. Oh, very nice. <laughs> very nice. How much? <laughs> How much? <laughs> transforms the car. The car was like kind of a chore to drive before, even with all the power. I think we have a lot more work to do, but this is such a good starting pace. Like the shifts are taking about 150 milliseconds. I think we can trim them down to at least the 60 to 70 millisecond range. Transmission's capable of 40. We'll see what we get, but right. we're just going to need, need to go over the data. One thing that we talked about and kind of the reason why we stopped and pulled it back in here was we ran into oil temp which we ran into oil temp before and we did just like beat on it back and forth <laughs> down the driveway like probably 30 times oil temp is an issue though i mean no matter how much we're beating on it if we ever are going to bring this car to a track which should be a hint to kind of what we're going to be doing this year with the car um if we're going to be bringing it to a track and doing you know lap after lap the oil temp is going to become an issue and as well the rear diff but we've talked about that before hopefully we have a fix coming for that soon so you know stay tuned hit that subscribe button make sure you guys are here to follow along because the sequential transmission is in it's working it's so much fun now it becomes kind of that gym kind style the time attack style the the ability to go drag racing and not just destroy and obliterate the stock transmission we can put it through its paces more than we did before. Because I, I would say most people probably thought we were putting it through its paces before, but now it's, now it's on a whole nother level. Now we're gonna reach the limits of the brakes because we're always going fast. We're always on the, either the throttle or the brakes. Yeah. Before we were kind of between and spooling turbo and just kind of driving Miss Daisy, Sunday, Sunday drive. And the oil temps are gonna rise quicker too because we're always on power. These cars sound awesome no matter what. One of the first modifications we did was the MDRP center exit. It might honestly be one of the best modifications we did because it doesn't split up the flames at all. So when this car shoots flames, it shoots bombs out of the center of the car. But hopefully we can take this car to events and stuff this year and have you guys hear it in person because 
I know for a fact that this is probably the highest horsepower GR Corolla in the United States. I know for a fact that it's probably the first sequential GR Corolla in the United States. Charles from Lamb Speed, who we've been working with throughout this entire project, we, me and him have actually been talking back and forth this entire week because he just got his GR Corolla uh, that runs Motec. They're putting a sequential in it, the same Kotec sequential. And I don't know, tech. I, he probably got it installed before we did, but I'm still gonna take the title because he didn't put it on YouTube. So if you guys want to follow along, like I said, this is GR Corolla 2.0, right? It's only up from here. We have some really big moves coming for this year, for 2024. Please go down below, hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you guys got any questions, leave them down in the comments. We'd love to hear them. The GR Corolla has officially become a race car and it's here to race this summer, 2024. This car is gonna take over the world. And uh, yeah, with that, this video is officially over. We will see you guys in the next one. Peace.